Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely evening once again from here in Jolly and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine, happy and of course in fine spirits. So now, today in this particular section, as you can see, flashing on your screens, we are going to actually start another very formidable chapter that is Consolidated Financial Statement. Needless to add that it's a pretty strong chapter as I just told you it's a pretty what we call formidable chapter and and above all it is also a pretty lengthy chapter and from the examination point of view definitely you can expect questions out of this particular chapter and now we are just about to start this particular chapter consolidated financial statements and those who have already connected with us, it's a lovely, lovely good evening once again. But still, I'm not able to find your messages. I do not know whether there is some problem with the messages or not. Uh, we, As you know, we always await for green signal just so that those who are connected with us through SAS system, uh, they also are on the line. Correct. So we are going to start, as I just told you. And besides that, another information, because now one chapter has already been over. And those who are watching us by way of what we call YouTube or through SAS system, correct, it is very important for you now to watch the chapter at the time of session itself. Because no guarantee that after that, the videos shall stay on the platform or not. Those who have subscribed to our courses, no problem for them. But those who are watching, as I just told you, or connected with us through YouTube system. So it is important for you henceforth because now onwards it will become very difficult for us to keep the lectures on the platform correct so it is very important for you to make sure in the meantime i find actually that green signal is on and now we are connected with the cell system those who have connected with us it's a lovely good evening to each and everyone correct so we are going to start as i just told you consolidated financial statement in the meantime you pull out your pen pencil whatever it is you will have to write a lot today, but not in the beginning. When I will ask you to write, then only actually you start writing. And don't get worried by the fact that something is already written over here. Correct? First of all, let me explain what we are supposed to do under consolidation. Correct? Since we have already gone through in days 103, now to tackle this particular chapter should not be a big issue. And we will see to it that this particular chapter, after some time, you will feel almost like a stroll in the park. Correct? Even though... I have seen that a student fraternity perceive this chapter from very dreaded angle, but I will see to it, as I just told you, that this particular chapter almost appear to appear to you almost like bread and butter. So here we go. We start this particular chapter now. Correct? So under the consolidation, first of all, you need to understand that every entity, every entity, any entity, any entity, if it is having control over the other entity, any entity if it is having the control over the other entity for example there is an there is an entity by the name of e1 and there is another entity by the name of e2 and this entity is our subsidiary company because e1 is exercising control over this particular entity if you remember earlier under when i started india's 110 over there also i explained this particular point over there also i explained this particular point that control can be acquired control can be acquired either through majority strikes correct or by way of attaining power to compose the board of directors of the other entity or when we have the right to control the relevant activities but most of the time we will see that control is acquired through majority strikes although it can be acquired in this way round which we explained under in NDS 103 correct so anyway what we are doing at this particular moment, consolidation. So here, just I started the discussion by saying say, that there is an entity by the name of E1. And this entity has got, got control over this particular entity, either through majority stake or because of the fact that it has got the right to compose the board of directors of this particular entity. Or because of the fact that it has got the power and the right to control the relevant activity of this particular entity. Whatever way, this entity is acquiring the control. Now, obviously, this entity then will be our subsidiary entity. This entity will be our subsidiary entity and E1 will be called as the parent entity. Now the point is that if you are a parent entity and you are having a subsidiary, in that particular case, you will have to actually prepare a consolidated financial statement. 
Now, the important point to note is that if you are having a control over the other entity, then only other entity could be your subsidiary entity. It is important point to understand that other entity could be your subsidiary entity only if you are having the control over the other, enti over the other entity. In this case, obviously, you will have to prepare in accordance with India's 110 consolidated financial statement at the year end and at the subsequent year end. Because when you because the day on which you are going to acquire the control, if you remember, under NDS 103, we talked about this particular fact that on that date, when we prepare consolidated financial statement, we prepare it in accordance with NDS 103. But at the year end, at the year end, whenever we are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement and at the subsequent year end, we shall always follow the guidelines of NDS 110. As it clear to you, there is nothing more to discuss in this particular chapter. Only thing is that now we, we will have to come straight away to know what are the steps which are involved in the preparation of the consolidated financial statement. That is the important issue which we I need to actually address. Correct? Still, I am not able to find out your messages. I do not know if there is some problem in the message box or something like that. Uh, Somehow I will try to actually come over, but in the meantime, I will continue, correct? So whatever I discuss with you, I have written here just to save the time. See, in the initial stages, I talked about this particular fact that every entity having a subsidiary must prepare consolidated financial statement in accordance with NDS 110 at the year end, at the year end. So any entity which is having a subsidiary entity will have to prepare the consolidated financial statement at the year end in accordance with NDS 110. Correct. And the point which I just explained earlier, that other entity could be your subsidiary entity only if you are having control over that particular entity. For example, there is an entity by the name of E1 and it has got 70% stakes over E2. So obviously E1 is having control over this particular entity. As you know, E1 will be investor entity and it, it will be called as parent entity this time because it has got majority stakes, it has got the control and the investee entity will be called as your subsidiary entity. And a moment ago, I also told you that control can be acquired through majority stakes or by way of agreement. The agreement could be to compose the board of directors or to what we call control or to have the control over the relevant activities. So these are the issues. Now we come straight as I just told you how to prepare the consolidated balance sheet. That is the important point in this particular chapter. Although the name of the chapter is Consolidated Financial Statement, basically this deals with actually at your level, preparation of consolidated balance sheet. In order to make you understand, and in order to make you understand the steps, the procedural steps which are involved in the preparation of the consolidated financial statement, we are going to pick up this particular example and just have a look. Even at this particular moment, you did not require to write anything. Just pay attention. So in this particular question, what I have written that there is the balance sheet of P limited. So there is, these are the balance sheet which are given to you. And here I have written balance sheet of P Limited and its subsidiary S Limited as at 31st of 3, 2024 are as follows. So you can see actually this time the balance sheets of P Limited and it is given in the question that S Limited is your subsidiary. The balance sheet as at 31st of 3, 2024 is given to you. And in the balance sheet towards the asset side, as you can see, we have written property, plant and equipment 10 lakh as far as parent company is concerned while subsidiaries, companies, property, plant and equipment is equal to 5 lakh. But the point which you need to take note of, especially when you are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement, and this is the area, this is the point where you need to keep your eye upon. Investments. Now see here, it is written in the column of P limited. Parent limited, we have written 5 lakh. And here it is written corresponding to it. In the column of the particular, it is written investment in 3000 shares of S limited. That means P Limited has acquired 3,000 shares of S Limited and in order to acquire 3,000 shares, we must have paid 5 lakh because whatever amount which we pay to get the what we call investment, that amount is written in the outer column. Is it clear to you? This is the point which you need to take care of whenever you are going to prepare the consolidated balance sheet. Further, you are being given actually current asset 11 lakh and 9 lakh. Current assets are given 11 lakh and 9 lakh and besides that equity and liability is also given to us equity and liability is also given to us and we are being given over here share capital 
share capital it is another point which you need to take care of i told you whenever you are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement you must notice very carefully and keep in your mind what is the amount of the investment so we have just seen that investment in 3000 shares of s limited is equal to 5 lakh further the second point which you need to take care of is share capital of subsidiary company the share capital of subsidiary company we just saw is equal to 5 lakh isn't it or not it is equal to 5 lakh correct and now share capital of parent limited is also given 10 lakh but what i asked of you you take care of what is the amount of the share capital of the subsidiary company you have to keep an eye over this particular point also another important point is you have to take into account the face value of the share capital also the face value of the share capital i have given here rupees 100 besides that i have written here other equity and un under the other equity i have written profit and loss account so profit and loss account of parent limited is 7 lakh while the profit and loss account of subsidiary company at the end of the year because balance sheet is given as on 31st of 3 2024 as you can see here the amount of profit and loss account given is 3 lakh and then we are being given non-current liabilities and current liabilities 5 lakh and 4 lakh Another point which you are given in the question, some additional information is given to you. The balance sheet date is 31st of 3, 2024. And here the dates are going to play hell of a role. So you have to be very careful regarding the dates, regarding the balance sheet date and regarding the dates which are given in the information. For example, here in the information, it is given that P Limited acquired the control on 1-4-2023. We got the control in the very beginning of the current year. And further, it is also given balance in profit and loss account of S Limited. Balance in profit and loss account of S Limited as at 1-4-2023, that means in the beginning of the year, is equal to 1 lakh. So, we have gone through this particular example, correct? And we have gone through very closely, very deeply. Now, we come straight to the point and we will discuss all the steps which are involved in the preparation of the consolidated financial statement. So, henceforth, whenever you are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement, what will be your first step? Let's come to this particular point. Under the first step, here I write. So, in order to explain the various steps, I have taken this particular example. Under the first step, whenever you are going to prepare the consolidated financial, it is important for you, it is very important for you to do an analysis. Your first step will be analysis. And what we mean by analysis here, see here, analysis of accounting period. Analysis of accounting period. Now you can start writing in case if you intend to. Analysis of accounting period. This should be your first step to prepare the consolidated financial statement. Analysis of accounting period. And what we mean by this particular step and why we do it, it will become very clear to you. Just wait for a while. So, under this particular step, what we are supposed to do, it is also very important. See, under this particular step, first of all, I am going to stretch a line. And when I stress this particular line, I will also note the opening date of the current accounting year. You have been given balance sheet as a 31st of 3, 2024. Obviously, this is the end date of the current year, 31st of 3, 2024. If current date is 31st, 3, 2024, I need not require to tell you what will be the opening date. 1, 4, 2023. This is your entire accounting period, also known as current accounting period. <coughs> your current accounting period it starts from 1 4 2023 ends on 23 ends on 31st of 3 2024 once you have noticed this particular period another point which you need to now take care of when you got the control it is given in the question and it will always be given in the question remember one thing so the date of control is 1 4 2023 it is given in the example or the question whatever you may call it so it is important for you to note when you got the hold of the other enterprise when you got the control on 1 4 2023 that means in this particular case we find that it is the date of the beginning itself when we acquired the control it is also known as as you know date of acquisition it is known as date of acquisition that means in the beginning of the year itself i have got the control 
Is it clear to you? And why this date is very important? It is important for you to understand. Why this date is important? Obviously, some of you would be very keen to know why we are doing all these things and what we are doing and what for we are doing. Slowly and steadily, your entire keenness and your entire what we call curiosity will be satisfied, but you have to be patient in this particular case. Correct? So, this is the date of the acquisition. Now, in this particular case, our accounting year starts from 1 4 2023 and ends on 31st of 3 2023. That means entire accounting period, entire accounting period, entire accounting period is also or shall also be called in this particular case study as post acquisition period. It will also be known as post acquisition period, correct? post acquisition period and what we mean by post acquisition period basic idea actually to do this particular working is to divide the entire accounting period into what we call pre acquisition period and into post acquisition period into pre period and into post acquisition period basic idea of doing this particular particular working is this and why we are doing that you will come to know later on but the point is that under the first step you have to divide the entire accounting period into pre acquisition period and post acquisition period so in this case what is happening first of all you need to understand what is pre acquisition period what is post acquisition period we have got the control on this particular date correct the time period after this particular date till the end of the year will be known as post acquisition period that means the period which is falling after having acquired the control is known as post acquisition period and quite obviously the period which will fall or which will precede the date of acquisition will be known as pre acquisition period so in this question we may say that entire accounting period entire accounting period is post acquisition period because in the beginning of the year itself, we have got the control. That means in this accounting year, there is no pre-acquisition pre period. Is it clear to you or not? But still there is one question for which we may need answer. Why we are doing that? Obviously, you will also get the answer of that particular question. But first of all, you pay attention down over here. So this is your first step. Correct. Under the first step, we have gone through the preparation of the what we call, oh sorry, analysis of the accounting period. And after this, after this, this is very important point. And after this is, this is your second step. And this will be known as degree of control. Degree of control. This will be your second step. Under the second step now, you will find the degree of control. Now, what we mean by degree of control and why we compute it slowly, steadily, every question will be answered. Don't worry about that. But how to compute it? In order to compute it, first of all, as I told you, while going through this particular example, that you have to keep an eye over three points, especially the three points. One, investment. And then I told you about what we call share capital of the subsidiary company. And also we talked about this particular fact, the face value. Correct. These are the three vital points to solve the question. Now, first of all, in order to compute the degree of control, slowly and steadily we shall move in this particular session remember one thing first of all i will ask you what is the share capital of subsidiary company you will note down very carefully the share capital of subsidiary company share capital of subsidiary company s limited share capital of subsidiary company as we have seen is equal to rupees 5 lakh so i will write here 5 lakh then i will ask you another question what is the face value of the share? the face value of the share is 100 if face value of the share is 100, quite obviously, number of shares of subsidiary company will be equal to number of shares, number of shares of S limited. Number of shares of S limited will be equal to how much? Number of shares of S limited will be equal to 5000. Clear? Basically, from next time, we need not require to do such a long working. This is the first, what we call, this is just the beginning. This is the initial question. Correct. So that is why I will have to go a little bit slowly. Don't worry about that. So total number of shares of the subsidiary company is equal to 5000. Now the next thing which you need to take care of is out of these shares, how many shares are in the hands of the parent entity. As we saw earlier, now see here under the investment, it is written that parent company has acquired or has invested in 3000 shares of S Limited. 
So that means whatever share capital of S Limited is there or whatever number of shares which have been issued by S Limited out of that now we may say that held by parent limited is equal to 3000. So we may say held by parent limited is equal to 3000. So here I write in this manner held by held by parent limited or P limited. So in this case parent limited out of 5000 is holding upon 3000 shares. So majority of the share more than 50% shares are in our hand and quite obviously we will be the parent entity. We will be controlling the other entity. So other entity will have to obey us for every direction, every instruction, no doubt. And that is why other entity will be called subsidiary entity. Now, important point is that out of 5,000 shares, we are having 3,000 shares. What about the rest of the 2,000 shares? So rest of the 2,000 shares, for the simplicity's sake, I will simply call it as other shareholders. Although later on, I will not call them other shareholders. We will call them, as you know also, we will call them NCI, correct? Non-controlling interest holder. Right now, at this moment, I am writing simply other shareholders. That means out of 5,000, 2,000 shares are in the hands of the other party or other shareholders. Important point which you must have noticed is that whatever share capital which have been issued by subsidiary company, it lies only in the hands of the two parties. One will be the parent and another will be other shareholder. Is it clear to you? From the perspective of the subsidiary company, just think from the perspective company. You are the subsidiary company. You have issued 5,000 shares and these shares will be only in the hands of the two parties. One parent entity and another one will be the other shareholders. Well, so we may say in this case, as far as degree of control is concerned, what will be the ratio? Ratio will be equal to 3 is to 2. And indirectly, it means parent limited is exercising three-fifth of the control of the subsidiary, that is 60% almost, and two-fifth control shall be exercised by the other shareholder. But important point is that majority control is in our hand. But the point here is that what we mean by control and why we compute it, and this is the biggest issue in understanding this particular chapter. Problem is that most of us simply do the surfacial study never try to understand the import. Import means the real meaning. And that is why later on we always get ourselves floundered by the things when some tricky things come before us. So I don't want you to be of the what we call same breed. So I simply want you to understand the things in a proper perspective so that later on we do not actually come across such issues. So for a while I'm stopping my this particular dis discussion for a while just for five minutes I will stop it that doesn't mean I'm closing down the class what my point is I am trying to make you understand the meaning of degree of control in order to make you understand obviously I will need some space this is the rough point at this moment you need not require to write actually I have stopped for a while to discuss the dis degree of control in order to understand properly when I say that in the subsidiary company, I'm simply trying to tell you that in the subsidiary company, in the subsidiary company, control of parent limited is three-fifth, 60% and control of other shareholder is two-fifth. Now, what does this particular point control, reflects and represents? Say here, we presume that there is an entity, correct? There is an entity by the name of S limited. Just assume S limited, E limited, D limited, whatever you may like to because I just want you to understand something. So I'm simply writing here some items. Let us say this entity is having property, plant and equipment to the extent of, let us say, 10 lakh. Correct. Further, it is having current asset, let us say, to the extent of also, let us say, 10 lakh. Besides that, besides that, this entity is having, let us say, share capital share capital to the extent of 10 lakh and one share is of rupees 100 each it is having share capital to the extent of let us say 5 lakh further it is having general reserve to the extent of 3 lakh it is also having profit and loss account balance of 2 lakhs correct and besides that it is having let us say liabilities both current and non-current combinedly equal to 10 lakh i think 20 20 lakh it's fine now Whatever share capital this company has issued, whatever share capital this company has issued, we are not concerned with that. In fact, that is given here. Whatever share capital this particular entity has issued, 
we presume that out of that capital entity P holds 60% of the shares. That means out of these many shares or out of this share capital, 60% shares is in the hands of this particular entity. Automatically, it means 40% capital is in the hands of the other shareholders, other shareholders. Now, these other shareholders, as we know, are known as non-controlling interest holder. And under India Ascended in 3 also, I talked about this particular point that why they are called non-controlling interest holder because the other shareholders have the interest because they are having 40% stakes in this particular entity. But point is that they are not having the control. That is why they are known as non-controlling interest holder. Is it clear to you? Another point which you never let out of, never let it skip out of your mind is that the entire share capital of the subsidiary company always wests in the hands of only two parties. One will be the parent and another one will be the other shareholders. Still, I am not able to watch the messages. What is happening? Is some issues are there with respect to messages? Just try to find out. I am not able to get the messages. Are you able to hear me, no? Okay, the staff will look into it. In the meantime, I will continue with this one. So, I was talking about this particular fact that the entire share capital of S Limited always lies in the hands of the two parties and those parties are parent and NCI. Now, because I have given you an idea that in this entity, let us say parent is having 60% and this one is having 40% stakes. Is it clear to you? Okay, now I am able to get uh, some messages. This is from Mahesh Jado. This is from Mahesh Jado. Clear, it is fine. Now, again, Bama Madhu. So, why you didn't actually message me earlier? Because says people are messaging one after another. Near, near about 100 messages I have already received from those who are connected with us through SES system. Anyway, but those who are connected through live, they are not having much messages and so far only two. Anyway, so point is that message box is on. So here the point which you need to take care of is S Limited has some share capital and this share capital is in the hands of the two parties. Now I am trying to make you understand the meaning of control. When I say that Parent Limited is having 60% of the control over this particular enterprise, what does it mean? It means whatever net assets of subsidiary company are, whatever net assets of subsidiary company are, for example, suppose if, would, if I would ask you to actually find out the amount of net assets, you within a flick of second, you will deliver me the answer. You will simply tell me, sir, add the assets, that is property, plant and equipment and current asset and deduct the liability and find out the net asset. Obviously, the net asset will be equal to assets minus liability. And assets is equal to 20 lakh, liability is equal to 10 lakh. So we may say that net assets of this particular entity is equal to 10 lakh. Is it clear to you? So whenever in this particular chapter, we would be computing, we will be rather computing the degree of control. The degree of control, we will be computing with an intention to know the share of these respective parties, these respective party, parent and NCI in the net assets of the subsidiary company. In the net assets of the subsidiary company. That is what we mean by degree of control. So if somebody asks you, what do you mean by degree of control? Indirectly, degree of control represents the stakes of the respective party, that is parent and the NCI, in the net assets of the acquiry entity or subsidiary entity. Is it clear to you or not? Okay. So, in this case, net assets is equal to 10 lakh. And if I would ask you, what is the share of parent in it? And again, you will deliver me the answer. 60%, which is equal to 6 lakh. That means out of 10 lakh worth of asset. Indirectly, it means 6 lakh worth of asset belongs to belong to parent entity while 4 lakh 40 percent will belong to NCI. Point is that more often than not almost in every question you will have to find out the stakes of the parent in the net assets on the date of acquisition. On the date of acquisition. Although I, I just told you net assets can be found out in such a manner and this seems to be a pretty easy step. This seems to be pretty easy step, isn't it or not? Do you agree? 
This seems very, very easy. Simply we will have to take the assets, subtract the liability, compute the net assets and simply multiply it with the proportion of the parent and the NCI to know their share in the what we call net assets. Unfortunately, in spite of the fact that this seems pretty easy to handle, but we are not going to adopt this approach to know the stakes of the parent, to know the stakes of the parent and the NCI in the net assets of the subsidiary company. I will tell you the reason. But before that, let me also tell you, there is another way also. There is another way around also to find out the net assets. How can we fi find out net assets? We know the meaning of, we first of all know that net asset is always equal to asset minus liability. We also know right from the beginning of the first day of our journey into accounts, we know and we are acquainted with this. But we are also aware of this particular fact that net assets in accounts is always equal to term equity. I do not know how many of you know this, correct? Each one of us, because we all are now in professional level and we are well aware of this particular fact that net assets term is always equal to equity. But what we mean by equity? Equity basically means share capital plus other equity and other equity basically means reserves and surplus. For example, in this balance sheet, the items of other equity are general reserve and profit and loss account and share capital is already given to you. So, for instance, in this particular case, I can also find out the stakes of parent and the NCI in the net assets through this particular approach. For example, share capitals, we can see share capital given to us is 5 lakh and other equity General reserve 3 and profit and loss account 2 combinedly 5. So, other equity is also 5. So, that means if I can find out the equity, it indirectly, it means I have found out the net assets. So, net assets are 10. Obviously, the shares 40% and 60% will be equal to 6 and 4. Try to understand my point. I told you net assets of the subsidiary company. The basic idea of computing degree of control is to know the stakes, respective shares, of parent and NCI in the net assets of the subsidiary company. This is the basic idea, first of all. Although, as I told you, this particular methodology seems to be a little bit easier to handle, but in spite of that, we will throw it into a dustbin. We are not forget about it now. We are henceforth, whenever I will ask you to compute the stakes of the parent and the NCI, in the net assets, you will have to adopt this particular approach. But the question is why? Question is why? Obviously, this is a trillion dollar question. Why we have to adopt this particular approach? The reason being is very simple. Actually, we have gone through NDS 103. Correct? NDS 103, we have already gone through business combination. It is important, it is important because later on we will see, later on we will see in the AS 110 says that while preparing the consolidated financial statement, we shall have to find out the goodwill, but goodwill will be found out in accordance with NDS 103. NDS 110 states that while preparing the consolidated financial statement, it is important to find out goodwill or gain on bargain purchase, but calculation of goodwill or gain on bargain purchase shall be done by, shall be done by NDS 103. And we have already gone through NDS 103. We have learned how to compute the amount of goodwill. Do you remember? Over there, in order to find out the goodwill, we used to compute the net identifiable assets on the date of acquisition of subsidiary company. You remember or not? And then we used to find out the share of the parent and NCI, but importantly, the parent share is important. And then we used to actually compare it with the consideration to determine the amount of goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. So point is that in the 110 states that when we will be preparing the consolidated financial statement, at some or other point of time, we shall have to find out the goodwill or gain on bargain purchase on the date of acquisition. Because on the date of acquisition, India's 110 never deals. So, India's 110 states that on the date of acquisition, you have to find out the goodwill and gain on bargain purchase. Obviously, you will have to find it out as per India's 103. This is the point which you need to understand. So, because ultimately now what I am trying to tell you is, ultimately the point is that it is the date of acquisition which will play a very important role. On the date of acquisition, just assume for a while that 
Opening date is 1-4-2023 and closing date is 31-3-2024. And presume that this is the date of acquisition, let us say 1st of July 2023. Presume it for a while. So on this date, I will have to compute the goodwill because this is the date of control. In days 110 states that we will have to compute the goodwill while preparing the consolidated financial statement. But goodwill will have to be found, found out on the date of acquisition. So on the date of acquisition, we need to find out goodwill. It means we need to find out parent share, parent share in the net assets of the subsidiary company. And in order to find out the parent share in the net assets, I need to find out the net assets of the subsidiary company on the date of acquisition, on the date of acquisition. Because ultimately, we shall have to find out the net assets on the date of acquisition. That is why we cannot use this particular methodology, assets minus liability. This is the point I just wanted to hammer into your mind. Is it clear to you or not? We cannot compute net assets on the date of acquisition through this methodology. Because the balance sheet will be given to us at the end of the year. Yes. I would agree to you up to an extent that if the date of control, let us say is on 31st of 3, 2024. In that case, I can use that this particular method because on that date balance sheet is available, list of asset is available, list of liability is available. We can take the difference and we can take the net assets. But otherwise, more often than not, we will see that the date of acquisition is different from the closing date. So that is the point on the date of acquisition. How can you apply this particular methodology? You cannot because balance sheet is not given on this particular date. So we are left off with only one alternative. We can still find out net asset by applying this approach. So that is the reason why we would, why we would be going with this particular approach of finding out what we call net asset. Is it clear to you or not? If it is clear to you, please let me know of that. Please let me know of that. And those who are watching, please kindly put up your messages also so that I can get a, get an idea. I've already told you it is important for you to actually attend the session in one go henceforth. Please don't complain later on. And I will not be responsible because sites are very, very strict about this particular point. They are already complaining. If you are going to release the entire course, how can we survive? So we have to take care of all the protocols which we have with our associated sites also. Please try to understand this point. So henceforth, henceforth, it is important for each one of you to not to miss the session in one go. Is it clear to you? So now I have started receiving the Pelotherop messages so earlier. So this is the points. You can understand it, how much we have to sweat it out to make you understand the point also. So under the first step, we are trying to analyze these steps to compute the what we call or to frame the consolidated balance sheet or consolidated financial statement as you may call. I told you this, this is going to be the first step wherein we are going to simply take into account the analysis and the basic idea of analysis is to segregate or divide the entire current accounting period into two segments that is pre-acquisition part and into post-acquisition part. Correct. And now degree of control, this is the most vital area. And now because you have got the what we call, you have got the exact meaning and exact intention for doing so, then it will become very easy for you to later on understand. Okay, then what will be the third steps? Your second step will be to know their respective stakes. And under the third step, what will be your third step? The third step will be, I will call it analysis of other equity item of analysis you can start writing analysis of other equity items other equity items for god's sake do not ask what we mean by other equity analysis of other equity items of subsidiary company you need not require to write off subsidiary company because whatever working which we would be doing would be only in respect of subsidiary company you can simply write analysis of other equity item now in this question I have given only one item of other equity. This is profit and loss account, correct? But in the examination, generally you may be given profit and loss account and general result. Generally at the most two items will be available. So now we have to do the analysis of other equity and what we mean by this, what we mean by this. First of all, before we start analysis, just have a quick look. 
what is the closing balance of profit and loss account as per the balance sheet because balance sheet is at the end of the year so 3 lakh is the balance in subsidiary company's profit and loss account first of all you will notice it then you will notice also very carefully and information will always be available in the question regarding this particular point that what was the balance in the PNL in the beginning of the year. So in the beginning of the year, as we can see, the balance in profit and loss account of S Limited as at 1-4-2023 is 1 lakh. So you need to take into account the closing balance and the opening balance. And accordingly, now you will go for the analysis. In order to do the analysis, what we are supposed to do, just have a look. First, I stretch a line as I have a habit. And I write here, I presume that this is the closing date. I will write here closing just for the sake of better understanding. I will write here opening. Correct? What is the closing balance in the question? 3 lakh of subsidiary company. So, in the profit and loss account, closing balance is equal to 3 lakh. I have noted it down here. Clear? Is it clear to everyone? And then, what is the opening balance? The opening balance given to you is 1 lakh. So, I will notice. I will note it down also 1 lakh. After having noted it down, first of all, you let me know what we mean by opening balance. Sir, you are asking such question. We are amazed. Are you casting any doubts over, over our abilities? No, I am not asked. But for, just to make you understand better. When we say closing balance, that means this was the amount of profit which subsidiary company must have earned last year itself. Because opening balance means closing balance of last year being brought forward. Are you getting my point or not? So this was the amount of profit which subsidiary company has already earned in the last year, although it is being brought forward in the current year. That, in simple words, that is what we mean by opening balance. Clear? Now, once you have noted down the opening balance and closing balance, the next step is that you will obviously, you will have to compare them. Now, if I am going to compare them, see here, if I am going to compare them, What will happen? The difference will obviously will be equal to 2 lakh. What does this 2 lakh suggest? What does this 2 lakh suggest? This 2 lakh suggests that subsidiary company in the current accounting year, in the current accounting year has earned a net profit of 2 lakh. That is why the closing balance is 3 lakh. Is it clear to you? Is it clear to everyone? By comparing these two items, obviously, we are going to find out what amount of profit subsidiary company has earned in the current accounting period or for simplicity's sake, we may call it during the year accounting period. So during the year, subsidiary company has earned a profit of 2 lakh. Clear? Again, I am breaking myself from the discussion just to make you understand a little bit better. Suppose there is an entity, subsidiary company and closing balance, opening balance. Mm -hmm. Opening balance. Let us say closing balance of the entity is 3 lakh and opening balance in PNL is equal to 1 lakh. Correct? And let us say accounting year ends on 31st of 3, 2024, begins on 1, 4, 2023, but controlling date is this one, 1, 7, 2023. 1, 7, 2023 is the date of control. If 2017-2023 is the date of control, indirectly it means this is the accounting year, stretching from, or should I say, starting from 1-4-2023 and ending on 31st or 3-2023. Obviously, this is the current accounting period. But in this case, because the date of control is 1-7-2023, we may say that out of this entire accounting period, nine months will be considered as post-acquisition period and three months will be considered as pre-acquisition period. Why? Because we acquired the control on this particular date, 1-7-2023. The period which lies after the date of control till the end of the year is known as post-acquisition period. And the period which lies preceding the date of acquisition and till the opening date is known as pre-acquisition period. In this case, in this particular case, in this example, you may, you may say, correct? I have taken the date of control as 1-7-2023. So, in this particular case, I will say that post-acquisition period is of 9 months and pre-acquisition period is of 3 months. Now, pay attention. 
presuming that closing balance is 3 lakh, opening balance is 1 lakh, how much profit subsidiary company must have earned during the year by comparing these two, you can find out the answer that is equal to 2 lakh. Is it clear? Now, this 2 lakh definitely subsidiary company has earned, but logically this amount which the subsidiary company has earned in the during the period is segregated again into two parts. That is pre-acquisition part and post-acquisition part. How will you segregate? If suppose I say that subsidiary company has earned a profit of 2 lakh in the 12 months period and out of those 12 months, first 3 months are pre-acquisition period. So you are going to tell me in this manner, say in the pre-acquisition period, profit earned by subsidiary company must be equal to 3 by 12. If I am not wrong, I think it is equal to 50,000. And in the post-acquisition 2 lakh into 9 by 12, that must be equal to 1 lakh 50,000. You got my point or not? Is it clear to you? Now, I will rub it out. I will rub it out. I just wanted to understand you better actually pre and post. So now pay attention because in this example which we are dealing up with, in this particular case, we have acquired the control in the beginning of the year itself. An entire accounting period is post acquisition period. Even though entire accounting period is post acquisition period, I would love you to make a habit of dividing this profit, correct? This the subsidiary company has earned in the current accounting period into two part, so that you never commit any mistake. At least you will remember that entire during the year profit is divided into two parts known as pre-acquisition part. Pre-acquisition period and post-acquisition period. Unfortunately, in this case, pre-acquisition period is not there. So that is why I may say that entire profit which subsidiary company has earned belongs to post-acquisition period. So entire profit which the subsidiary company has earned in the current year shall be considered as post acquisition profit. Shall be considered as post acquisition profit. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Perfect. Okay. If it is clear, it is fine. And once you have, and once you are done up with this particular step, your next step will be step number four. Under step number four, and which is pretty vital step, under step number four, what we are supposed to do, just pay attention, under step number four. Okay, under step number four, then I will prepare a table. I will prepare a table, correct? And this is known as, for simplicity's sake, analysis table. And I will tell you, through this table, what we are trying to actually trace out. Whenever you are going to prepare this particular table, whenever you are going to prepare, in fact, this prepa preparation of this table, you can say is the soul of the solution of this chapter. Is it clear to you? How well and how deftly, deftly means uh, how excellently, should I say, you have prepared this particular uh, table. So, as I told you, this particular table is nothing but the soul of the entire solution of this particular question or this particular chapter. So, in order to understand how to prepare the analysis table, just pay attention. Here, I will write amount. Just allow me a second. And then, I will write here P limited, parent limited. And don't write subsidiary limited, write NCI, other shareholders, NCI. We have already computed their shares 60%, 40% or you can say 3 fifth or 2 fifth. It is better to mention out their shares also. And obviously the first column is of particular or details, whatever you may like to write. Correct? Now here, first of all, I'm going to ask you some questions and please deliver me the answer after a little bit of trouble to your mind. Could you tell me in this case, if I if I'm going to ask you, first let me write. Here I have written A and then I have written here share capital. Let me write first share capital and now I will write here date of acquisition. So my question to you is on the date of acquisition, what is the share capital of subsidiary company in this particular case? I will pull up the question. In fact, the balance sheet is already before you. 
correct this is the balance sheet you can still watch the balance sheet figures 10 lakh and 5 lakh on 31st of 3 2024 balance sheet is given now could you tell me please listen to the question carefully what is the amount of share capital of subsidiary company on the date of acquisition and date of acquisition is 1 4 2023 what is the amount of what is the amount of share capital of subsidiary company on 1 4 2023 Kindly deliver the answer. I have received some answers from the SAS system, from Umbala, from Jaipur, from Pilikoti Jaipur. Pilikoti Jaipur is very active nowadays. Correct, from Palwal, lots of people are watching from Rajasthan. And from Ghatkopar, Amit Khagde is always there. Correct. And from Tamil Nadu, it's uh, V Prasanna. Okay. And what about the others, those who are connected with us through what we call a YouTube system? Please let me have your answers also. Let me see actually how many of you are able to understood it so far i am asking a very simple question in the balance sheet subsidiary company share capital is given as 5 lakh of course this share capital of subsidiary company is given as at the end of the year and my question is my question is what is the amount of share capital of subsidiary company in the beginning of the current year This is the accounting year, correct, 31st of 3, 2024. And beginning of the year is 1, 4, 2023. Subsidiaries company share capital on this date is 5 lakh. And I'm asking you, what was the amount of share capital on this particular date? What is the amount of share capital on this particular date? This is the question actually I am asking. See here, whatever share capital subsidiary company was having on the closing date, in the beginning of the year also the share capital must have been 5 lakh. It is as simple as that. The reason is very simple. Share capital never changes unless and until we will go for what we call fresh issue or something else. And if we will go for debt, obviously the information regarding debt will always be given in the question. Otherwise, you shall always presume that whole through the entire year, this share capital must have been 5 lakh, whatever is given in the balance sheet. It is as simple as that. It is clear to you or not. So we may say without any hitch and hitch that in the beginning of the year, share capital of the session share capital of the subsidiary company is or should I say must be 5 lakh and most of the answer barring 2-3 I got wrong I do not know why some people told me 3 lakh and on what basis and some people told me very vaguely 1 lakh on what basis I'm unable to figure it out but anyway try to understand this particular point that share capital you need not require to worry about this particular fact. Whatever share capital will be given in the balance sheet, presume it. Same amount of share capital was there in the beginning. So here, on the date of acquisition, share capital, when I write share capital, it means share capital of subsidiary company must be equal to 5 lakh. Correct? Is it clear to you? Through this particular table, actually what we are trying to find out, we are trying to find out on the date of acquisition net assets of net assets of subsidiary company. This is the point I told you because on the date of acquisition, it is imperative to know the net assets of the subsidiary company and we cannot follow that approach assets minus liability. We cannot follow that approach even if we wish. Is it clear to you? So we will have to follow the equity approach and under the equity approach in order to determine the amount of equity on net asset indirectly, first of all, we'll consider the share capital on the date of acquisition. And as we know, equity means share capital plus other equity. So now on the date of acquisition, I'm trying to find out the amount of other equity that is profit and loss account. Could you tell me what was the balance of, what was the balance in the other equity or profit and loss account of subsidiary company in the beginning in case if you get confused correct first of all you shouldn't get confused because you have done here the analysis and you can see in the beginning actually subsidiary company is having a profit of one lakh in the beginning of the year subsidy now i got the answer from sandeep t5 lakh it seems actually today we have kept time period of the message quite high that is why we are having very late answers 
Anyway, you all are absolutely perfect and your answers are absolutely fine. It is nice to see that you are still connected with us. But the point is, Burma Madhuri says 10 like how come we are asking the share capital of the subsidiary company. Please try to pay attention. It is important to understand that. So it is. this is 10 lakh is the share capital of uh, parent company. We have to take care of subsidiary company. Now please pay attention here. I hope this particular point is now clear. So I am asking you what is the amount in the other equity and there is one item of other equity profit and loss account. So in the profit and loss account of subsidiary company in the beginning or on the date of acquisition balance was 1 lakh balance was 1 lakh so by adding these two items because now we have share capital plus other equity on the date of acquisition so we may say on the date of acquisition equity equity of subsidiary company and equity basically means net assets so you can see through this approach we shall be able to find out net asset at any point of time during the entire length and breadth of the what we call accounting here is it clear to you so i will add it so now we can say with great authority that net assets of subsidiary company or equity of the subsidiary company on the date of acquisition must be equal to 6 lakh if it is clear to you allow me please with your answers and acquaint me with your answer so that i can proceed further anyway further if you are able to find out the net assets or other equity basic idea of preparing the analysis table is to find out to find out to find out the equity or net asset equity always means net assets please don't ask ever sir what we mean by equity lots of heart attacks nowadays are taking place after 50s i'm already 55 so please so what my point is you need to understand equity always stands for net assets on the date of acquisition in order to find out the net assets we take the help of calculation of equity and equity always stands for share capital and other equity so in order to know the equity of the subsidiary company you will take the share capital of the subsidiary company and their other equity item on the date of acquisition this is the entire idea this is the entire crux of the discussion now what is the amount of parent share and what is the amount of uh, non-controlling interest holder so 60 percent we are having 60% out of 3 lakh. I think it is equal to 3 lakh 60. If I am wrong, please correct me. So 3 lakh 60,000, 60% we will calculate. And 40% will be equal to, I think, 2 lakh 40,000. So 40% 40 of this will be equal to 2 lakh 40,000. Okay. So you can see on the date of the acquisition, on the date of, on the date of the acquisition, respective stakes of parent and respective stakes of NCI we are able to found out through this particular approach is it clear to you once you have started preparing this particular table my advice to you is don't stop simply by what we call computing the amount of equity that is why I have divided it into two part of course part a is vital then under the second part of this table I'm writing here B and here I'm going to write what C here I am going to write post acquisition, post acquisition. In fact, now you will understand. In the beginning, I told you under the first step, under the very first step when I did the analysis, why we are doing this analysis and why we are segregating it into pre and post period. That is the reason here because ultimately in this particular table, I will have to write, write post acquisition profits. So post acquisition other equity items and in this case because other equity item is only profit and loss account I will write here profit and loss account correct just to confirm what is the amount of post acquisition profit 2 lakh as you can see so profit which has been earned after the acquire after the control has been acquired correct so subsidiary company in the post acquisition period acquired 2 lakh worth of profits these 2 lakh worth of profit will be segregated or divided between these two parties. So 60% will be equal to 1 lakh 20,000. And I will add 80,000, 40% will belong to NCI. Once you have calculated it, that means battle is already won. Only thing remaining is how you are going to win the war. Correct? So battle you have already won. War we will win with other steps step number five under step number five we will be computing what 
goodwill or gain on bargain purchase i have already told you goodwill or gain on bargain purchase must be computed in accordance with india's 103 because you are computing it on the date of acquisition and in order to compute the goodwill all you need to take into account first of all you simply write here net asset in fact we need not require we need not require so many steps later on you will see i will shorten these steps but this is just the first one so first i will write the net assets net assets indirectly means equity net assets or equity of s limited on the date of acquisition so on the date of acquisition what is the amount of net assets of subsidiary company now we can say with great confidence sir it is six lakh right so six lakh is the net assets clear very clear sir then i will subtract the nci share as you know we used to do under india's 103 nci share when we say nci share it means out of six lakh 2 lakh 40 thousand belongs to belong to nci so i will subtract it so whatever remaining will belong to parent so 3 lakh 60 thousand remaining net asset indirectly reflects parent share or p limited share p limited share in net assets on the date of acquisition so on the date of acquisition whatever net asset subsidiary company had out of that 360 belong to us is it clear to you or not in fact you can start directly with this particular step there is no need to write all these things because we already have this that is that is the use of this table you can see from this particular point that 3 lakh 60 thousand is the share of parent so why we need to write unnecessarily these two steps so later on we will shorten it out correct anyway at this moment this is the first session and then we will compare it with the amount of consideration consideration sir where it is written in the question consideration you are right it is not very clearly mentioned word consideration but you have to be careful i will take you back towards the question so that you understand it better here when i was analyzing the question towards the asset side i told you please pay extra attention to the word investment 3,000 shares you have acquired and how much you paid to get the control because by acquiring 3,000 share you got the control and you paid how much you paid 5 lakh. So 5 lakh will be considered as the amount of consideration paid by the parent to the owners of the subsidiary company. Is it clear to you or not? So now I will write the amount of consideration. Amount of consideration I think is 5 lakh. So consideration indirectly means investment so in order to compute the goodwill henceforth now onwards you can simply simply compute it with the help of these two points simply write parent share in the net assets on the date of acquisition and compare it with the consideration because the amount of consideration is more amount of consideration is more so one lakh forty thousand if my computation is correct if somewhere i am going wrong please correct me i mean to say with respect to calculation so this will be considered as goodwill is it clear to you so this will be your fifth step and now the sixth step what is the sixth step india's 110 states that when you prepare the consolidated financial statement the nci is worth on the date of acquisition and as at the reporting date must be reflected indirectly what does it mean first of all here you write nci then you write on the date of acquisition could you tell me what was the worth of NCI on the date of acquisition? When I'm asking you in this manner, what was the worth of? Indirectly, I'm asking you, out of net assets on the date of acquisition, what worth of asset actually belonged to NCI? That is 2,40,000. We have already computed it in the analysis table. So we may say NCI value on the date of acquisition is equal to 2,40,000. That means on the date of control, NCI is commanding 2,40,000 worth of asset. But because after the date of control, after the date of control, subsidiary company has earned a profit of 2 lakh. So out of 2 lakh, NCI will get 40%, 80,000. And of course, parent will get 120. So you must add here, you must add here, share in, share in post acquisition share in post acquisition other equity 
और सिंपली प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट सो इन दी पोस्ट एक्विजिशन प्रॉफिट टू लैक शेयर ऑफ एनसीआई इज फोर्टी परसेंट एटी थाउजेंड डेट मीन ऑन दी रिपोर्टिंग डेट डेट मीन बाई द एंड ऑफ द ईयर the nci worth has gone up to 320000 this is the point that mean in the balance sheet i will reflect the nci at 320000 is it clear to you or not right sir so once you are done up with all this step only step remaining is preparation of the balance sheet and in order to prepare the balance sheet it is very easy to prepare the balance sheet consolidated balance sheet now we can prepare the consolidated balance sheet see here consolidated balance sheet very easy in order to prepare the consolidated balance sheet first of all i will write here and before i start writing let me take take you towards the what we call question see here this is this was the question correct actually to do consolidation is very simple all you need all you need is to simply add the items for example property plant and equipment will figure in the consolidated balance sheet at 10 lakh plus 5 lakh that is equal to 15 lakh most of the items most of the items will be simply added in a line by line manner is it clear to you line by line manner only two three points you have to take in mind investment will not appear in the balance sheet now you may ask sir why first of all you need to understand in accounts the difference between the event and the transactions what is an event and what is in transaction okay i will leave it you must understand that balance sheet trial balance they are basically not transactions they are statements statements generally are events on a particular date is it clear to you at least this much is clear if an item appears if an item appears in an event case statement i mean to say in a statement and not in account i am not talking about account i am talk talking about what we call statement balance sheet is a statement trial balance is a statement bank reconciliation statement is a statement so if an item appears in the statement logically it must be posted only once you must note that this 5 lakh we have already used in calculating the goodwill so this item is exhausted that is why you are not going to actually write it in the consolidated balance sheet and after some time i will give you more logical reasonings behind that correct then current asset you will simply add 11 lakh plus 9 lakh 19 lakh will come correct so as far as asset side are concerned as far as asset sides are concerned 15 lakh property plant and equipment no investment will figure in the consolidated balance sheet current asset will be added besides that the goodwill which you just computed will also find place is it clear to you so your consolidation of asset side is over in the share capital again two three points are vital while preparing the consolidated balance sheet while preparing the consolidated balance sheet share capital of subsidiary company and other equity item of subsidiary company will not find place is it clear what i mean to say for example in this case when i will write later on in the consolidated balance sheet i will simply write share capital of the parent 10 lakh sir why we are not going to write share capital of what we call this entity this is the question because it has already been exhausted it is already used when we prepared the table you remember we wrote over there 5 lakh worth of share capital of subsidiary company because it is used so nothing is left now so 10 lakh other equity as far as other equity item of 3 lakh is concerned you must have seen it was already taken care of in order to do the analysis so that is why when i am going to write the consolidated balance sheet i will write only this item 7 lakh but 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 this item will be adjusted and this item when i am going to write i will write it in this manner consolidated profit and loss account why it will be written as consolidated pnl because i will write over there 7 lakh as pnl plus the share plus the share of parent in the post acquisition profit the post acquisition profit was 2 lakh correct 80000 belong to nci which was used in the calculation of nci on the reporting date and out of 2 lakh 1 lakh 20000 belong to us and we will add it with our profit so indirectly we are combining what we call our profit with our share in subsidiary that is why it is known as consolidated pnl so in the balance sheet i will write it as consolidated pnl and then as far as 
non current liabilities are concerned i am simply going to add that is how we will have to prepare that means three points are needed to prepare the consolidated balance sheet no investment no share capital subsidiary company no other equity item the rest of the item you will simply combine only thing is that just take care of consolidated pnl and in the upcoming questions consolidated general reserve that's all otherwise nothing is there you must have noticed i have done my level best to make it extremely simple for each one of you i hope you would agree with me and i will be very disgusted if i won't find the comment boxes are flooded up with lots of messages in this particular case consolidated balance sheet so now we can prepare correct i have already told you so asset side first of all assets as far as assets are concerned i will write here as i told you one nca non current asset under the non current asset i am going to write one property plant and equipment as i told you property plant and equipment i will simply add the respective items i will put the consolidated amount in the outer column 10 lakh 10 lakh plus 5 lakh so in the outer column i will simply write 15 lakhs is it clear to you line by line addition then i will write here under non current asset then i am going to write goodwill actually we got the amount of goodwill correct through what we call calculations we did the calculation over here 1 lakh 40000 this was step number 5 so i can mention it in the examination this is step number 5 through which i have got the amount of goodwill and amount of goodwill is 1 lakh 40000 so i will write simply here 1 lakh 40000 clear and then we are having in this particular case current assets as far as current assets are concerned you will simply do the line by line addition current asset was 6 lakhs of the parent and 9 lakhs of the subsidiary if i am not wrong so total will be equal to 15 lakh anyway i have to basically explain the entire conceptuality some figurative mistake if there is i will take sorry of you in advance second now i will write here the equity and liability as far as equity and liability are concerned equity and liability make a habit of making the balance sheet in proper form if we will start today it will always help you later correct so under equity and liability first of all we write equity under the equity first of all we write a share capital in this question as far as share capital is concerned we shall write in the consolidated balance sheet share capital of only only parent 10 lakh subsidiary company share capital will not find place in the consolidated balance sheet it is already used investment will also not find place after share capital then as i told you we sh we shall have to write the other equity again i told you that other equity of subsidiary company will not be written you are going to write the other equity of parent only but when you are going to write the other equity of parent you will have to write consolidated pnl consolidated pnl and in order to compute the consolidated pnl first of all note down the amount of pnl which is written in the balance sheet of the parent entity we saw that parents uh, other equity i think was 7 lakh and here you will have to add share that mean the share of the parent share in post acquisition share in post acquisition pnl so post acquisition pnl was 2 lakh and out of that 1 lakh 20000 was our share so we shall add that share to this balance and in the outer column i am going to write 8 lakh 20000 this is known as consolidated pnl correct then under this after this you must not forget another important point and i will write that with red pen see here under the equity we write minority interest also actually i should write nci not minority interest nci non controlling interest but pay attention non controlling interest is an item of equity but it is written separately as a separate line item we computed on the reporting date nci was 3 lakh 20000 correct so as per step number 6 you write here step number 6 so 
it was, I've forgotten the figure in the meantime, 320. So, 3,20,000 is your non-controlling interest. 3,20,000, correct? Non-controlling interest is an item of equity, but it is always reflected as a separate line item, correct? So, we have reflected it as a separate line item. So, these are the things which as a professional student, you need to take care of. Then in the question, we are being given non-current liability. I told you simply line by line addition, you will have to do. The amount of parent is 4 lakh and amount of subsidiary company, I think was 2 lakh, total 6 lakh. Likewise, then you are going to write here current liability. As far as current liability is concerned, 5 lakh plus 4 lakh. That is equal to 9. Clear? So easy. I hope each one of you have understood it the way I want you to understand. Now, please let me know how many among you are feeling a little bit confident and understood this particular concept of today. If any one of you are writing, you can write it. You can pause it and then you can write it also. Correct? I will show the entire workings you can pause it and then you can write it i will do it in this manner and then this was the question if some of you are interested in noting down this was the question or example right so with that we have started this particular chapter and my only piece of advice is Henceforth, because today the warning has been given. You consider is that warning or advice. I would love each one of you to watch the session in one go. And don't later on complain if the video is pulled off. Correct? Because it is not in my hand. I have already told you, I told you earlier, we also committed. Another point. Those who have subscribed to our courses, it is fine. But those who are still interested in and simply watching and have, haven't subscribed, let me tell you, now the even the live classes, book fee is 2,500. Now, no more 1,250. Reason is there. Because earlier we committed. And even though we incurred heavy losses, we told, okay, we will have to carry out our commitments. So, nearly 75 copies have been sold out already. Correct? So, and we are very thankful to you for what we call reflecting the sort of passion and reflecting the sort of trust upon us. But at the same time, now onwards, you must also try to understand. Because if some of you will call, that we are interest, interested in joining the session. Now the fee has been gone up to 2,500. Reason being is that we are supplying you now four books, correct? Four hard copies. You must understand there is a cost involved in it and there is further a cost involved in the courier charges. It comes to near about what we call, you can say at near about 2,000 to something like that. So, and you can consider 500 as a margin, whatever you may. But still, you are getting one of the I should not actually tell it from my angle. It is better you should talk about it. But you are getting one of the quality coaching here. And at the same time, you must have seen the commitment. We have completed already business combination. And in the Telegram channel, I have uploaded three more questions, which is not there in the books. Because with the every day I keep on do some changing. So it is not possible to everything put in the book itself. So three more questions are there. And we will do those questions of business combination along with this particular chapter. But in the meantime, because I have given the link in the what we call and I have pinned that in the comment boxes of the last lecture. So immediately download the what we call those uh, notes also so that whenever during these sessions I'm going to do those questions, uh, you must be having the notes because those are quite important questions have been taken from the recent examinations. And no one else is going to give you any what we call full uh, solution. Remember, I was the only one who gave the solution and I will be giving the solution to you. So, these are the points which I wanted to discuss with you and hope that and thank you very much for coming up with very nice comments as far as students who are connected with us through SAS system and those who are connected to YouTube, they have also told me now that they have been able to understood it quite well. Thank you so much and it was a pleasure to meet you again and shall be meeting you again in the next session tomorrow at 8.30. And we will stress this particular interesting, highly interesting chapter it is to some further heights. Okay then, time to say good night.